Hey guys, so let me tell you right now, carbs are not evil. They're not the cause of diabetes, cause of insulin resistance, cause of weight gain. That's something I believed back in probably 2002 when I went down the low carb rabbit hole and I ended up paying the price, you know, probably 15 or 16 years later. My point in making this video is that we have to stop making carbs the number one enemy. And when I say carbs, I'm not talking processed carbs. Okay. I'm talking natural carbohydrates. They're very good. They're, they're your body's preferred source of energy, which is glucose. Um, we have to stop vilifying them. So I want you to understand what I wish somebody would have told me back in 2002, that I was going to cause myself some major, major issues. I want to walk down and explain this with you. So if you decide that you're going to cut carbs because you think it causes diabetes, insulin resistance. Understand this, that as you decrease those carbohydrates, your body is going to respond in kind by increasing stress hormones. One of those stress hormones, for example, is cortisol. Now, why is it going to do that? Because now it needs to break down free fatty acids as an energy source. And that's one of the, the big claims is that that's great. You're going to be a fat burner. Well, it's actually not great to be a fat burner. Okay. And I'm going to explain why, but these stress hormones are lipolytic, meaning they're going to break down fats. Okay. Now, as they break down the fats, the free fatty acids in the bloodstream, again, they're going to increase in the bloodstream. They're compensating. They are now going to become your primary energy source. A number of problems with that. However, let's just keep going down this line of thought as free fatty acids rise to, to keep those blood sugar levels stable, they're actually going to cause, they're going to desensitize your insulin receptors and they're going to, they're going to inhibit uptake and metabolism of glucose. Because again, we need insulin to bring glucose to the cell's front door. And then we need GLUT4 transporters to get that glucose into the cell. But because you've cut way back on your carbohydrates, there's no reason for that. So it's going to stop the, the uptake and metabolism of glucose. Your cell can't deal with glucose and free fatty acids at the same time. It's going to take the free fatty acids. Okay. Now over time, this desensitizes your insulin receptor. You become insulin resistant. This is exactly what happened to me. It took a long time. It wasn't something that's going to happen in a week or two or three weeks, but over time you can develop insulin resistance. So I want to drive this point home because each week as my channel grows, I get more and more people coming to me going, look, that's the exact problem I'm having right now. I was keto. I was low carb for a long time and now I can't process carbs at all. I, I have a terrible time processing them because this is what's going on in your body. Now let's keep going more. As this insulin resistance happens, insulin can't even get the glucose to the cell because the receptor's resistant. So now we see a drop in GLUT4 transporters, which again, GLUT4 is basically uh, when insulin brings glucose to the outside of the cell, GLUT4 grabs it from insulin and brings it into the cell. So now we see GLUT4 going down. The bottom line result is all this focus on eliminating or decreasing carbohydrates. If you do it long enough, whether it's low carb, keto, carnivore, pick your poison, you are highly likely to develop insulin resistance. So again, we're blaming this problem on the wrong culprit. Natural carbohydrates are not the problem. Insulin is not the problem. Insulin's a messenger more or less. Now this doesn't make fats bad. We do need the ability to be able to burn these fats, but it's an inferior energy source in many ways. So we're blaming carbs. It's not the problem. I can promise you more and more people are coming to me with insulin resistance from doing low carb diets. And I realize that that flips the whole paradigm on its head right now. Everybody wants to blame carbs just because they don't have an understanding of biochemistry, just like I didn't. It just sounded so simple to go, insulin is bad. Carbohydrates are therefore bad because they raise insulin when that's not the case. Okay. The other problem that we have is once somebody gets to this point, 
being able to just going back to eat carbohydrates isn't likely going to happen. You're going to have to go extremely slow. This is the huge mistake I made. This is why I ballooned up in weight because I just threw carbs back in and through caution of the wind, I ended up gaining 35 pounds. Now, interestingly enough, I'm eating more carbs than ever. My weight is going down. My blood markers are as good as they've ever been. Um, but it's taken some time. So please don't make the mistake. If you've been doing this long enough, you're most likely not going to be able to just reintroduce carbohydrates at your previous level. But um, please don't blame carbs. Carbs are most likely not your issue. And I get it. I'm going to have all the low carb people, you know, mad at me in this video and tell me how I'm wrong. And that's fine. Trust me, I've, I've forgotten more than most people know about low carbohydrate eating because I was doing it so, so long ago before it was as popular as it is now. Uh, the, the time restricted feeding and fasting, I've done it all. I've been there and I paid the price health wise because of it. Um, and I don't want to see that happen to other people. So I wanted to make this video. I wanted to talk some common sense. I'm not here to tell you that you can't get some benefit from keto, from carnivore, from low carb, depending on your situation that may happen. Uh, but done long term, you can potentially run into problems. And I just think it's unfair to lump all those issues on carbohydrates again, especially natural carbs, processed carbs. Fair enough. There's some issues there, but let me know in the comments, guys, any questions, any other topics you want me to cover, please make sure to go to my website. There's a free checklist there. A lot of people are looking for options outside of drugs and surgery. So I talk a lot more about those things on my email. Let's go grab your free checklist there. Um, hope it was helpful. You guys see you in the next one. Thank you.